Deacon Sakari. We back at it like a crack at it. They done let them bruise in the dough. In this wicked industry. Damn, to shine the light. Uh. They done let them bruise in the dough. Oh uh, shit. shit. They done let them bruise in the dough. They done let them bruise in the dough. Uh, uh. They done let them bruise in the dough. We ain't going nowhere. He bruise. He bruise. He bruise. He brew, uh, he brew, let's get it. They done let them bruise in the dough. They done let them bruise in the dough. Look, Joe Biden need to free dark low. The hell is wrong with dude? No Alamolek, but I got perfect vision in the dark. I'm a lexicon, I'm a megalodon, all my verses ripping them apart. Mosaic law with the church is missing, it's the worst religion from the start. In my soul where the word is written, out of circumcision, out of heart. I'm rocking my fringes, I'm in Seattle, rocking like Hendrix. No industry gimmicks, you rappers to finish, I'm kicking the door off the hinges. Throwing stones like he's endless till you get the finish. You should have repented in minute. This truth is endless. They loving the image. Sign out of what happened to Kim. What happened to Kim? I keep my pencil on point, no sharpener. Used to weigh pounds of troll. I lay down the flow like carpenters. She causing division in the sisterhood. I'm marking her. I'm preparing the way for the harvester. I'm a harbinger. Cops hop out, we bail on them. Leviticus, I like my fish with scales on them. Ask Chief E from he could vouch. We be putting in the work while you sitting on the couch. Camp haters quiet as a mouse. Yeah, I ready. Shout out to my brother Austin Trout. Just as a reminder, if there's doubt, I wear every single fringe, even when I'm in the house. Yeah. Day of Pentecost in the synagogue. I've been a boss every minute, cost me. And I got the dinner sauce. They call me Pace Picante. They put beef on my plate, and I ate the onion. Get all your truth music at DeaconSakari.com. That's nine albums. We even got a couple free for y'all. Support the cause, y'all. Children's Bibles with black and brown images. All on DeaconSakari.com. Even your head wraps. Stay dipped. Stay brewed dripping. All right. DeaconSakari.com. All right, y'all. Go to CZYN.network. CZYN.network. We done with Patreon. No more Patreon. CZYN.network. You're going to get videos too hot for YouTube or early releases. So go sign up. Promo code Deacon Sakari. Promo code Deacon Sakari. Promo code Deacon Sakari. Not only do you get Deacon Sakari's content, you get Gorilla Hebrew content, Hassad content, other camps putting their content on this platform. We need our own app, so sign up using promo code Deacon Sakari. C-Z-Y-N dot network. It's our own app, our own platform. The white man can no longer subvert or hide or try to censor this truth. So sign up and get this heat. Promo code Deacon Sakari. Promo code Deacon Sakari. Promo code Deacon Sakari. CZYN. Popping mollies and putting powder in your nostrils. We be in the trenches, needles under benches. We be giving them the gospel. I keep 12 Sakari members with me. We be moving like apostles. True. Some stisses is dead traps, hair rascals, just a Lithotno. The church don't even know the truth. They can even tell you you an Israelite. The Arabs selling you all the switches and the malt liquor or the Ishmaelites. You can show a nigga slave ships and the Bible still won't get it right. Until the time's out, then a nigga gotta find out what them missiles like. All praises, all praises, all praises. This is going to be a long one, so let's get right into it. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, and we do so by Shema Mashiach Yahweh Shai. As y'all have been prepped, this is from a few days ago at camp, Gino Jennings Church member. Um, without further ado, like I said, it's going to be a long one. I may stop. Um, I may, uh, <clears throat> I may stop it. I may commentate on it. I may let it ride all the way through in the spirit. Let's get some likes. Let's drop some bombs. Let's get some likes. Let's drop some bombs. Somebody said what happened to the show yesterday. You must have been living under a rock, but we still love you. Oh, real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. The show yesterday YouTube tried to strike me and flag me, so I uh, 
I had to go to Deacon Sakari Streets, but I want to make this formal announcement real quick. Uh, Sakari Varsity Online Academy specializing in Hebrew Israelite apologetics, defending the gospel, proving all things. Any camps can enroll. Women are welcome. We are officially opening a classroom two due to classroom one being trunk tight full. So all praise to the most high for that. Brothers and sisters ready to get out here and wield this sword against these fake Christian apologists. We are the real Hebrew apologists. So hit the email, sakariseattle at gmail.com. Serious inquiries only. We beat the feds. Now let's go. Hit them like buttons. Hit them like buttons. Let's go, y'all. Boom. Take care. <laughs> One second. There we go. So he just walks up at that point. Let me put my, let me do like that. Boom. There we go. So he just walks up at that point. Let's go. He didn't want to, he didn't want to, <clears throat> the brother didn't want to be on camera. We ended up putting him on camera anyway throughout the duration of the, the exchange. Just in case anybody thinks we're lying just in case gino jennings makes a response video and try to say he's not a member this is the brother right here the wada ag uh, uh the hebrew greatly appreciate you brother for the super chat donation yeah all right so just in case but as you can see it's like he got some type of vest on he may have had some weapons in there or whatever he did have a knife in his pocket you know he was ready to go to war for um for his apostle as he says he says he, he he was ready to go to war for his apostle but he didn't know he was finna get if he tried to do anything i'm glad it went peaceful because that's what we want but we are legally and constitutionally equipped and prepared to protect ourselves and and pull out mop sticks so um he would have got egg rolled, but I'm glad it went good. All praises to the most high. Let's keep going. Church service. No, General Jennings made a claim 
that we wouldn't pull up on them. The Israelites would not pull up on them because they were scared. We took the challenge and we went to his church and he didn't want to deal with it because he knew that we wanted all the smoke and he wasn't ready to deal with the Bible. Because Christians don't deal with the Bible. They deal wait, with wait, wait. rhetoric. Wait, real quick, sir. When they say that we went interrupted the service in the middle of the service, that's not what happened. Those guys were outside the service. They didn't yeah, come inside. They, they, was out, yeah. they was outside, but they was on the sidewalk. Right. And, that, and it's a public sidewalk. Right. You could be in a public sidewalk. Right. But they but they were still trying to intimidate the people that was coming out of there. Oh, don't intimidate the people. You were just reading the Bible. Don't let those guys fool you with that, that talk of, uh, of intimidating. You're a black man like you're a black man. We're standing outside of the church. We used to go to church our whole life. If you come outside, we're going to talk to you the exact same way. The pastor is afraid to let us talk because he's afraid he's going to lose his congregation. So he'll put it in a way as if, oh, they're being rude. They're being, listen, IUIC did that in Philadelphia. They've been doing it here in Seattle. They've done it for the last three weeks. My mother was at a church and they did this too. My mom went outside and said, hey, my son is in the Sakari. Took their little pamphlets to the back. She seen him again and did the same thing. My sister's laughing. She was like, mom just loves to run these people and tell her, oh, my son is in Sakari, in Sakari. So don't listen to what they're saying. All right, we're the exact same hey, what, What's your name? Your name, Eric? Yeah.
feel like well, if, if we say your uh, first, what's it called? First Baptist Church? Is that what, what your church is called? My church? Yeah, Gino Jesus Church, first church of our Lord Jesus Christ. First church of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that's a congregation, right? Yeah. So if, if you guys said Asians and, and East Indians cannot come into your congregation, would that be racist? Um, if you if you say it, if you talk, no, if, you if, say it? If, if the apostle Gino Jennings and the leadership at, at that congregation said Chinese people and East Indian people cannot come into this congregation, would that be racist? I mean, would you think we'd be racist? I, I want to know what you think. I don't think it'll be racist, but I know from the Christian church point of view, that would be racist because the Christian church teaches everybody equal. But that's what, that's what the white Christians teach. So do you feel like the black Christian is equal to the white Christian? I think we as human beings are equal. Okay, so let me read this to you because most Christians will say, yes, that's racist to not allow another ethnicity into your congregation. So Gino Tenney says the Hebrew Israelites are racist. So we're going to show you that not only are the Hebrew Israelites racist, but God is a racist. Read that. Deuteronomy 23 and 2. Well, let's just see if you agree with the text. Go ahead. Look at Deuteronomy 23, verse 2. Louder. No! A bastard shall not enter into the congregation. Uh -huh. Verse 3. Verse 3. An Ammonite. So I know certain brothers said the audio was a little muffled. <clears throat> Is the audio better now? Is the audio better now? If not, let me know so I could um, change a couple things. Let me know if the audio is better now that I'm speaking and the camera's a little closer. Ammonite or Moabite or a Moabite pastor shall not enter into the congregation. So the point we're making is, is Geno Jennings says we're racist. So we're taking one of the scriptures in the Bible where God is being racist and showing how Jenny, Gino Jennings or his uh, members don't know the God of the Bible. He's not the guy who's all hugs and uh, Woodstock yogurt covered chocolate raisins. Let me do something real quick, y'all. Let me pull it up on here and let me just see if it's a little louder. Now, I'm going to be real with y'all. The audio might not be as good. I'm sorry, the, vis the visual might not be as good if I do it like this, but the audio may be better. So let's try this. So if all these nations took us in slavery, is afraid to let Would you think we'd be racist? We're gonna know what you I, think. I, I wanna know what you think. I don't think it'll be racist, but I know from the Christian church point of view, that would be racist because the Christian church teaches everybody's equal. Well, that's what, that's what the white Christians teach. Yeah. So do you feel like the black Christian is equal to the white Christian? I think we as human beings are equal. Okay. So let me read this to you because most Christians will say, yes, that's racist to not allow another ethnicity into your congregation. So Gino Tenney says the Hebrew Israelites are racist. So we're going to show you that not only are the Hebrew Israelites racist, but God is a racist. All right. Is that better, y'all? So you guys don't need to see my face. Let me rewind it a little bit. Yeah, that's way better. Way better. All praises. Salakia, y'all. It don't start getting good till right here anyway. It didn't start getting good till right here anyway.
So all praises. Don't worry about my blurry beard and my blurry face. You guys don't need. You guys see what I look like almost every day. Like I always say, it's not about me. It's about you, nephew. So let's go. Read that. Deuteronomy 23 and 2. Well, let's just see if you agree with the text. Go ahead. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 2. Louder. Bring it out. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation. Uh-huh. Straight to the point verse 3. three. Straight to the verse 3. An Ammonite. An Ammonite. Or Moabite. Or a Moabite. Read shall that again. An Ammonite. An Ammonite is one uh, ethnicity, one race of people. Or Moabite, or Moabite, another race of group of people, shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. So, God is saying that certain races of people can even enter into the holy congregation. So we want to know how is that not racist? All right, boy, you got that. I mean, that that scripture's got a point. It's got a point on that scripture. That's a point. Okay. Can I give you another point? If I said, you said uh, uh, we're humans are equal, you mean Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Right. God says that the black, Hispanic, and Native American man who are the true Israelites, that they're above all people. That's a racist statement. Go ahead. Book of Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Read out. For thou art an holy people. A holy people. Unto the Lord thy God. Uh huh. The Lord thy God had chosen thee. To be a special people unto himself uh -huh. above. above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So this is see, so when, when Geno Jennings and other apostles and other pastors get mad at us, all we're simply doing is reading what the Bible says. But the Christian church has forgot about all the old testament and they only use the New Testament. But I can show you in the New Testament where God is still racist. Give me first Peter two and none. That's right. 1 Peter 2 and 9, Matthew yeah. 15 and 24. So if Jesus Christ, right? You believe in Jesus Christ? Yeah, I believe. What if I showed you that he was racist? Nah, he ain't racist. Is it, is, it, is it wrong to say that you're my children, but the white people are dogs? Is a dog equal to a, a, a whole human being? So you trying to say white people are dogs now? No, I'm saying, is, would that be racist if I did say that? Yeah, I think that would well, okay. not. I mean, yeah, to Matthew 15 and 24. So we're going to see, he just said, thou, thou says, the Lord. Right. Book of Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. This is red letter, so it's Christ speaking. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So the, 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 the Son of God says, I'm only sent to the Israelites. Go to verse 26. Verse 26, but he answered and said, it is not me. It is not right to what? To take the children's bread. What people are the children, which are the Israelites, and what? And to cast it to dogs. And the other people are the dogs. So what does the word bitch mean? Female dog. Female dog. So what would Jesus Christ be calling a non-Israelite woman? You say what? You say what? A bitch. And I just got to go with what the text says. See? Do you believe that we're African, Hamite, Gentiles? Or do you believe we are the chosen people of God? Or have you not studied that in depth yet? I've studied a little bit of it. A little bit of it? I, my, my whole, I don't have no really beef switching. I just, like he said, he just made a comment. He said, we came for the Hebrew Israelites went to Philly and they pulled up. What do you mean by that? Like pulled up, like you like you wanna do violence no, or something? We drove no, to the is, spot. is that is that what he meant when he said we we just pulled up and No and, no 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 no. So for the record, IUIC, the brothers in purple, they do not carry firearms. We legally we legally carry firearms because we exercise our constitutional right. And you got crazy white people, not for our people. You got crazy white people out here. You know what I mean? He might be one of them. But uh, so, <laughs> so IUIC does not carry firearms. They don't even promote that. So they're not pulling up at anything. You see, they've probably been to over 100 churches 
and maybe only one incident happened where oh, a sister, no, nah, a sister, a sister took off her heel. No matter fact, the Christian yeah. church, the pastor, the, 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 yeah, the, the, pastor. Minister, the minister pulled out a gun and put it to the guy's head. Yeah. That's what I was telling you. Yeah. And then yeah. the sister took off her heel. Was gonna idiot. beat the hell. They was trying to beat the hell out of the no, audience. she did. Where she did. Uh, I, I don't know where it was at. I think maybe that, maybe Texas, maybe Texas or something like that. It wasn't in Philly. It wasn't in Philly. It wasn't at uh, 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 Gino Jennings Church. But we get we get beat up and hit and 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 infringed upon spit at. and spit on yep. and, th and stuff thrown at us. Let me correct that. We don't get beat up, but we they we are the ones always getting attacked. I shouldn't have said beat up. But even if even if we did get jumped and beat up, the apostles got jumped and beat up. It just so happens when people cross that line on at a Sakari camp, they end up on their on on their two pockets, if you know what I mean. It's not the opposite. So don't believe the hype or the narrative that we're coming to the church to to perpetuate violence. All we're saying is, hey, you know, our people love the church. We all grew up in church. This brother sang in the choir in church. Barbara. And we know our people are in them churches, and we just wanted to give them a chance to hear the truth of God, that they're God's chosen people, and they're the holy people of God. That's, That's right. it. And they can still go in there, and there's Israelites who go to church. There's Israelites who go to church, who know they're Israelites, but they may believe everybody can be saved still. They may believe that the law doesn't bring you salvation, but they can, they still keep the law. So we're not we're not saying that you know the church is that bad for our community. And I misspoke. So when I when I be speaking, when I'm on the streets and the highways, I'm very conscious of what I say. After I'm done, I say I misspoke three times because <laughs> I do something Alizar calls live editing. I misspoke. The church is freaking horrible Salakia. in a sense of we can't try to unify and find some commonality and some middle ground so we can bridge the gap between us and the church that's it no violence no no hatred no evil eye no grudge or none of that you wanted to say something i i just but hold on real quick appalled. but they i just want to be for the record like this is coming for the record because you keep saying you keep lying on, on the on the brothers they specifically regurgitated and repeated the same sentiment the whole time. We just came to have a peaceful dialogue. They said that the whole time. So I don't know where you're getting that from. Oh, matter of fact, he said, uh, uh, Gino Tennis did say that IUIC be calling people bitches. And that's not IUIC. Now, there are Hebrews that like camps that, that talk like that, but that's not. So you can't group everybody. Just like the Christian church don't want the Protestant don't want to be confused with a Baptist. The Baptist don't want to be confused with a Presbyterian. A Presbyterian don't want to be confused with a non-denominational. So that's just with the Hebrew Israelites too. It's very fractionated and that we're not monolithic. We all don't believe the same thing and we all don't act the same way. We all don't even teach the same thing, but we do have a foundation that the Israelites are the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. That's right. That's right. Jesus is the Messiah got to keep them laws that you didn't commend. That's but right. But there's differences outside of that that are very minuscule to me, but that's the foundation that we have. I got a question. And you're an Israelite, brother. You're an Israelite. I'm not like saying, I was just appalled how the, how the Hebrew Israelites demonstrated when they went up there. Do you have a problem with, see, maybe, maybe a lot of our black men, right? Have you been in the military? You from Tacoma? No. Nope. Where you from? I'm back to Midwest. Midwest? You used to gang bang? I think it was uh, some of the brothers. Okay. So do you have a problem with black men being militant? I don't think, I don't really think a black person can be militant. You right. know, that's my opinion. I don't think you can be militant. Okay, let's and see, I was trying to be nice. This brother said a black man cannot be militant. So see, this is why I teach that the church ain't nothing but effeminate homosexuals, homosexuals and effeminate men and majority women. You understand? So I said, you think IUIC is being violent just because they're masculine and militant. That's what it is, because the church has raised some homosexuals and effeminates. It's just true. 
let's change that word. Masculine. Masculine. I mean, yeah, well, I mean, nothing wrong with being masculine. I can see myself a masculine man. Right. You know? So a lot of times in these black churches, it's full of women and effeminate men. And so when you see a masculine man who, who is over his woman and running his household and, 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 and talking firm and asserting himself with tenacity, it's looked at as, as being violent or aggressive. Because the white man has told us we can't, we can't speak out about, like, they say we're a hate group because we're mad that we get gunned down every 28 hours by a white cop. And we speak out against it. So they want us to suffer silently. Oh. And if we don't do that, we're looked at as violent and aggressive. That's not the case. We're made to be men. We got a dick and two balls. And God damn it, we got to stand on that. All I got in this world is what? My balls and my word. That's you want right. to say something? Yeah. Yeah. But it's all love. Like I just, I just lost a lot of respect for okay. some of the brothers out of that camp that did that. Okay, let me ask you this real quick, because I want to make sure that we focus on this. I don't, I don't want you to think like this anymore, right? You're saying that something you saw bothered you, right? Yeah. I'm asking you to tell me specifically what you saw that bothered you. Because nobody cussed, nobody even had a gun on them there. Nobody yelled and screamed at anybody. Well, not no language. derogatory term was, yeah, right. there was not one derogatory term you. So what was it that you saw specifically? Not what you might have heard the pastor say, or what they might have said. What did you see that, that, that offended you? Was they was yelling at some of the members that was coming out of the church. Were they yelling you at seen that? No, did yeah, you see yeah, that? I seen, well, I seen it online. On, on you YouTube. did? That yeah. They, they, some brothers? of the brothers was yelling. They was telling the, the members to come debate them. And they didn't want to debate the brothers, the Hebrews. They didn't want to debate them. And they was just, you know, they was talking loud on their speakerphone, wanting to engage with the... They, they were yelling. They were yelling at people saying... Come and let us t talk about the Bi God's word with you, Lord in Christ. Other people didn't want to engage with them. That's what I. That's what I looked at as being aggressive. So you if know? I try to, if I wanted to speak to you and you didn't want to speak to me, it would make you offended because I'm trying to tell you something. No, nah, if I'm walking away, you know, it's fine. I mean, if you if you're gonna yell at me, that's fine. If I keep walking, then you know. But if you start, like I say, they interrupted the service on that day. And that was a crime right there. You don't interrupt the service when the service is actually being done. That was a crime. I've called the cops. Ad nigga, head ad nigga. Yeah, but see, when you say I heard, service, real quick, I'm gonna get right back to you. Now, you're right about that. But what 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 I heard from IUIC was that it was it was uh, not while he was teaching. Right. So there's two sides of the story. How are we going to say which one is right and which one is wrong? I don't think the brother from IURC would lie. I mean, so I, I really can't speak on that part of interrupting a sermon. But I do know that is a crime. But the brother said he wasn't teaching at the time that they, they were asking him to come outside and have, have a discussion. He was teaching. Uh, he was in there teaching. But this is the thing, when you're watching inside the building teaching, it's not like IUIC knows and he's up on the full page. Yeah. It's something. They know that it's Sunday service, but if they don't show up at that Sunday at that time, when's the next it, time it, they're going to be it, able to run it into? It was their service when he was, he was... No, but I'm saying, that's the only oh, time God. that they know that he's going to be around. Okay. It's Sunday, so they show up there. They don't know that he's actually in the full pit and this is the time that he's speaking, but if they show up there on Saturday, he's not going to be there. If he shows up, if they show up on Monday, he's not going to be there. The only time that they can go is when he's there on that day. And they didn't go inside and interrupt anybody. They're not outside messing down on the, on the loudspeaker yeah. saying the words of God. So anybody who goes to church who believes in the Bible, they shouldn't be offended when they come out and hear the words of God being read. That should make the person go up and talk to you. Whether we agree or not, the Bible is the, is the common ground that glues it all together. So I should be able to, you should be able to come up and talk to him. He should be able to come and talk to you. One second, one second, real quick. We only got 247 likes. And I'm telling y'all, it gets good. He starts pushing back. He starts going to war. He starts getting cut with the sword. We got about 800 on the counter. So that's really 1,600 people. That's how the YouTube counter works. We can't go any further until every last one of y'all click that like button. Nigga not asking for a dollar. Nigga not asking for a Chinese nickel. Nigga ain't asking for no pesos. Nigga ain't asking for no crypto coin. Hit that like button before we move on. Hit that like button before we move on. It's going to get good. Exclusive footage only here at Deacon Destruction Mode. You know what's going on. 
hit that like button. I can't believe I just looked and said 247 likes. How many people in here dining and dashing, eating, getting eaten, get eaten, getting edified and stealing, eating, getting edified and running out the restaurant? Lord in Christ. This is just a local mom and pop store. I ain't no big uh, 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 franchise. This ain't no big chain restaurant. This is a mom and pop restaurant. Hit that like button so we can continue, y'all. Hit that like button. Then, then the listener, the water king, y'all, about your thought. Greatly appreciate you stealing food in the middle of a church. It's okay when that famine of the word come. Yeah, that wait. Matter of fact, when the famine of the word come is the only time y'all get to dine and dash up in here at Sakari. You understand? Come on, y'all, hit that like button. It ain't gonna charge your account no money. Let's take a look. All praises. Come on, man. I know. I know what it is. Y'all ain't being disrespectful. Y'all were just caught up in the exchange. That's what it is. Let me just psych myself out and think there's not half haters and half lovers in here. All right, let's go. Regardless if we believe the same thing, and it shouldn't be looked at as offensive if I'm not cussing, I'm not belittling you, I'm not beating you down, especially when you can tell that we're there for our people. This, this isn't a thing of hatred. This is our people coming as, as a thing of love for our people. Real quick, I'll give it to you. Like you. So is there if, if if you found out that your 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 pastor was teaching a lie, would you still follow him? No. Nope. So that's our job to come out and show you the lies that you might not have seen before. Did you know that your teacher is teaching that Jesus Christ is Esau? Have you ever heard of Esau before? Yeah. No, this that was a body blow. When we showed him how Geno Jennings teaches that when it says Esau is the end of the world, that that me that Esau means Jesus. Oh, he 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 was floored. He was floored. He almost repented. He almost repented and became an Israelite with this part. Let's go. Esau means it's just another uh, word for Jesus. And that's not even true. No. That's not true. Esau is not another word for Jesus. Isa in the Arabic. Isa, not Esau. Furthermore, that's the English translation of a Hebrew word, Esau. But you know what Esau, who Esau is? He's a man in the Bible that God said that he hates. Give me Romans 9 and 13. Right. So when he turns around and says he's, he's being slick. No, that's a good point. Right. That's a good point. He did say that Jesus is Esau, Esau because that's how you say it in the Arabic. Arabic right. But it's not, it's Esau in the Arabic, yeah. not Esau. Right. The Bible says, so he went to the Bible and he said that Esau is Jesus in 2 Ezra 6, being the uh, real quick, I'm sorry, y'all, but Otis Miller, Otis Miller, see, I don't like when people don't answer my text messages, but they be in my live chats. Brother Otis, hit me back on a text message, brother. Come on, Sakari Varsity. I'm trying to get the online academy going. I'm I created a whole nother group. Hit me back, man, for I time you out. It's like I'm playing, but hit me back, King Shalom. End of the world. Esau is a man who God hates. Give me Romans 9 and 13. Come on. This is Romans chapter 9, verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau, Esau have, I have I hated. So if Jesus is Esau, God hates Jesus. So this is a, another uh, pseudo false doctrine that's being taught up out of there. And this is why the brothers are so fervently blitzing these churches and trying to get them away. How does Pastor Gino Jennings say that you receive salvation? How long have you been studying under him? Over five years. Over five years. How does he say one receives salvation? Well, you gotta, be, you gotta have repentance. Sorry, you gotta repent, and you, and you that, When you say Esau, he's hated. Are you talking about right. Jacob's brother? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Why? Why did he hate him? Why did he say he hated? Him? Well, that's good. Let's go to the Bible. Give me verse eleven. Verse eleven. Romans chapter nine, verse eleven. For the children being not yet born. So before Esau was even born, before he did anything, God created him to hate him. It's his own divine prerogative. It's his, it's his own Listen. divine providence and prerogative. Go ahead. <clears throat> Neither having done any good or evil. Before he did any good or evil. Go ahead. <clears throat> that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand. So God elected him to be the evil and the hated and the wicked before he did anything. And God created Jacob and elected him to be the holy people, the chosen people, before he could even do anything. It's all predestination. Yeah, well, my understanding of that is 
I think God hated him because he sold his birthright. Okay, well, let's That's entertain that. So there's so, so you know, God has a reason to hate. But he don't hate him as a as a human being or a person or he sold his birthright. That's what he hate. Okay. Well Malachi. Uh, Esau, real quick, one second, one second. Esau sold his birthright to Jacob. And then reverse three. That's why God said he hated. One second. And he came out, he was his birth. You know? So, so, I hear this often, people say that God hates Esau for what he did. And that God only hates Esau, but not all of Esau, not all the Edomites. So I just want to read this in Malachi 1, 3 to 4. Go ahead. Malachi chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Let's see if he hates the people of Esau. Go ahead. And I hated Esau <laughs> and laid his mountains. <clears throat> so he hates the human being Esau. Go ahead. And he laid his mountains and his heritage. Waste. Heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Uh -huh. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished. We, the people Edom. These are the descendants of Esau. Go ahead. But we will return and build the desolate places. We, not just the man Esau, we. Go ahead. Thus said the Lord of hosts, they shall build. They, all the Edomites shall build, but what? But I will throw down. Uh -huh. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. God said this people is the most wicked people of the earth. This isn't talking about Jesus. It's talking about the Caucasian man today. Go ahead. And the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. So indignation is hatred. And God said he's going to have that towards those people forever. When did God stop hating Edomites? If all people can be saved, right? And he said he was going to hate them forever. How do we reconcile and rectify that? How do we deal with that? Somebody got to be lying. So you just consider the Edomites, they're just... Don't do it to you, you know? It's not me, it's what the Bible says. He said they're done for. He hates them forever. He said in Isaiah 34, get that, Isaiah 34 and 6. I ask Christians this all the time, Christian apologists to be exact. Because we blitzed, our brothers at IUIC, they blitzed the church. We blitz in the Christian apologists. Right. We go on their live shows, we bring them on our shows, we show up in their city. They ready, they'd be ready to swing sword. I do give them that, but to no avail. Go ahead. This is Isaiah chapter 34, verse 6. Uh -huh. And the sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness. My bad. Verse, uh, verse 5. <clears throat> this is Isaiah chapter 34, verse 5. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Uh -huh. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. Idumia is the Edomites, the Caucasian man. Go ahead. <clears throat> and upon the people of my curse. The people of his what? Of, of my, my curse. curse. Ooh, wow. God, the God of the earth, the God of the universe has cursed the people. Are you strong enough to lift that curse? Well, I'm not <laughs> strong enough to lift no curse. Right? I ain't either. So we just want to know in the Bible when he reversed that curse from them. That disproves everybody being able to be saved. You know? Which is being taught in, in, in the Apostle Geno Jennings Church. We got to deal with these things in the Bible. And I hope they watch uh, Tony, uh, what's his name? Tony Harvard, Brother Tony Harvard, and uh, a couple other brothers up in there. I hope they watch this video and they're dressed as, and, and, and you see this peaceful dialogue. We ain't yelling and screaming and Kirk, so called cussing, right? We should be able to do this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's why I asked you. Did, did, did God believe in the same doctrine that those brothers believed in that went there? For the most part, yes, we do, and we didn't see anything wrong. Like I said, I can't see. I don't know if they came while he was giving the sermon or not. I don't have the facts on that. Your top, you wanted to say something? Uh, yeah, it missed me though. Yeah, but, but I'll say this though. What's going on in a Christian church is, is kind of similar to like what happens to a kid when they get whooped by their parents. You know what I'm saying? When a kid gets a spanking, he's not looking at like mom is whooping me because she loves me. You know what I'm saying? Mom's being mean. You know what I'm saying? 
we can't think like children as adults. You know what I'm saying? You have to understand that when we when when, when I see I see shows up out there, it's not a thing out of hatred. It's a thing out of love. We need our people to understand exactly what's going on in this Bible, and our people really don't get it. See, what's happening is like when you see us up here, you probably think, or or the average person, they're like, oh, you guys are just like this. The way we were raised, we were taught this. We weren't taught this our whole life. We were in the same church as you. We just figured out because God pulled us out of there and made us stuff. We're reading words to you in the Bible that I know you probably never even heard before. But you'll say to people, God loves everybody. You know what I'm saying? Because the pastor's telling you, everybody's equal. We just showed you a scripture where God does not love everybody. And we showed you a scripture where, where everybody is not equal. It just said you guys are above all people. Now, unless we're just going to ignore that and act like God didn't say that, I mean, I, that, that's what's happening in the church. People are ignoring Bible verses. So it's our job to let people see what's getting ready to happen in here. You know hell's getting ready to break loose out here, right? But if you're in the church and you think everything's all good, all love, 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 you won't have any clue. Like the Bible says, when Jesus comes, going to be a thief in the night, right? Why? I, I'm sorry, man. I, I had to jump in here. I was going to let it go. <laughs> Look at this brother in the chat, man. This is how you know Christianity is worse than heroin and fentanyl like i always say it's worse than crack cocaine heroin and fentanyl so basically this brother saying he just heard us read how god cursed all the edomites how he hates all of them and and he still says god loves everybody <laughs> this is what you call <laughs> a nigga that should probably I, I would listen somebody go make this a sound bite i would rather black people shoot heroin in their veins than to be in Christianity. And go clip that and put it on TikTok. Why? Because it's easier to get. My mom was on all of that. She's 25 years, 30 years clean and sober now. So, but coming out of Christianity is harder than that. And I also want to say this too. I also want to say this too, since we got a lot of people in here. Sakari Varsity, I, I have to stress the fact, if you want to specialize in Hebrew apologetics, if you want to specialize in Hebrew apologetics, defending the gospel, proving all things, having an answer for all questions, any camps can enroll. Women are welcome. Um, this is an online academy with limited registration. So hit up Sakari, Seattle at gmail.com. The first class is already trunk tight packed. We had to create another one. All praise the most high for that. Let's go. But sure, you're gonna have to sit down and sit in. You're gonna have to sit down somewhere before I make you go sit in the corner. Uh, let's keep going. How's it gonna be a thief in the night? Because you guys aren't prepared. The pastor's not preparing you. He's trying to take people's money. But we're people that were in that church. We came out to tell our people, people like you, that they're lying. We are the children of Israel. No, everybody is not equal. That's why everybody did not get thrown on these ships like this. Everybody's not walking around with the last names of their slave master. That's in the Bible. That was gonna to happen to people for a reason. The pastor has to point it out to you. Now, I just said that. I've seen you do a look. What do you think about what I just said? You got some points. I'm okay. you, you, you speaking some points and stuff. Right. You know, and I'm not going to, you know, you have the right to speak your truth. Right. When but, you see it. but my truth might not even, just because it's my truth don't mean it's the truth. We're supposed to speak the truth, right? So let me ask you, does God love everybody? According to the Bible that we believe. I think, I, I think, I mean, Y'all wrote, y'all, y'all said it. Y'all said what uh, God said. Mm -hmm. But me personally, I mean, me personally, I think He loves all humans. That's okay, what I cool. So look, so look. This one, man. This book right here. Do you believe in that? Yeah. Okay. Now, if you went to church, right? Let's say you walk in the church. But when you walk in the church, there's no more of these in here. There's just a Quran in there. Uh, what, what, what's the pastor we're talking about? Name? Uh, Jenny. Jenny's is still in there, but the Bible's not in there no more. The Quran is in there. Would you still stay in that church? No, I don't believe it. Exactly. So this is the thing. The reason why you're in that church is because of this. This yep. book. The yep. words in there. Yep. We have to get in tune with the words in there. Not with the man. Let's not fall in love with the man. Of course we can. Uh, I like the way this guy teaches, but it can't be. I love him so much that it doesn't matter what God is saying. Exactly. No, that's true. I just want to chime in real quick and I'm going to keep, I'm going to let it go. You see, usually I'm always talking on these, but I've been letting it play. But this dude is a black. He's a black. And we made up that acronym. Uh, B-L-A-C-C, bootlicking ass coon Christian. And uh, we're trying to wake him up. And uh, I think it gets better later, but I forgot. So I don't want to spoil it. No spoiler alerts. Let's keep going. If we believe that these are God's words, we need to read those for real. And we need to test each other on them. We can't ignore that. 
That's the big thing. That's why we're in slavery. Because I uh, uh, idol worship. Our people want to worship men. The Muslims, it doesn't matter what's written here, even though they quote it. What matters is what Farrakhan says. You know, whatever he said, don't be like that. We just read what God said, right? The Lord said that we're supposed to trust him with all of our heart. We're supposed to lean on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. That's what Jesus said. Don't be a person that said, well, <laughs> what did God say? He said, he said uh, my thoughts are not your thoughts. You know what I'm saying? Just as the heaven is higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours. So when I say this, God hates you, you can't say, well, you know, well, to me, because we can all feel a certain way. The way we feel as individuals, that don't matter. What matters is what God is saying. So we have to forget what these people told us. We have to get back into what God said. If his word said it, why does God say, uh, uh, let, every, let every man be a liar? But God's words are true, right? I know it doesn't sound good. Well, God hates somebody, but that's what it's saying. So we just have to stand up for the word of God. That's it. That's a lot. I got a question, right? Is there anything in your mind that lets you know if Gino, that a possibility that uh, Brother Gino Jennings can be wrong in his doctrine? I mean, every, what he says, I, I don't, I think he's right, what he says. But do you believe that there's a possibility <coughs> that he may be wrong? I mean, anything's a possibility. You know, anything so, is, so, anything is so a possibility. Way, so the only way that we can kind of nationalize his ideology is in the school right? Or, but yeah, you got to write the question. So, so like the brother, brother, a multitude of precepts, right? These are things that he's going to have to answer for and rationalize or reconcile in his biblical doctrine, right? That's all we were trying to do. Rationalize what he's teaching. We need to say that Jesus Christ is Esau. Or, 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 or. Do you know his name is Joshua in Hebrew, right? So if he's wrong, here's my thing, right? If he's wrong about something that critical, that basic, He's a learned person, right? Would you think a learned person would make that grievous mistake comparing Jesus to Esau? No, I don't think so. I'm at, brother, I'm asking you a question. I said, is there a possibility that he could be wrong? Yes. I mean, if, if, if I don't, if, yeah, if you don't understand, if you don't understand, he could, he could lie if you don't understand. It could be a possibility. Okay, so he could be wrong, right? We just proved them to be a liar with Esau, right? Yeah. Would you agree with that? We, can, we just proved them. Yeah. I mean, it, it could be a possibility. No, yeah. Okay, so that's what we're saying. There's a possibility that he could be wrong. Now, what's the ramifications if he's wrong? So you're fucking I mean, he, he's got to deal with God. We're, done, we're talking about salvation, right? So, so it is our obligation to make sure that we set the record straight. So, if the ramifications of him being wrong is people losing, according to your understanding, people losing out on salvation, right? It's okay that people. That's a big deal, right? Yeah. So you would think that he'd be willing to go and have a sit down and have a conversation to make sure we build the truth, right? That's all we're saying. And we're saying, and we're exactly saying, and we're exactly saying that he's wrong. He's not being thing that he's wrong. See what I'm saying? He's putting out for So, I, we just want to make sure that you have an understanding. So, at least have an open mind. Because men is not his father. Caleb, come over here. See what I'm saying? I'm looking at the map. He don't want to deal with Listen, the brother just brought out a great friend. You think he wants to deal with that level of school? He's separating that the rest of the But if you have the truth, would you want to deal with that? Did he say that? 
I don't know what you said. It, okay, I, so, I don't like, I don't, so I don't why did crypto thought I mean? Wait, hold on, real quick. Do you pay tithes? Yeah. You pay tithes. But I thought the law was done away with. Right. I mean, I could go to the scripture. It, it's all supposed to support the church. But if it's support, just call it support. Don't call it a tithe, because the tithe is, is a Levitical law that Geno Jennings says is done away with. Right. And 10% and specifically, 10%. So he, he's quoting the Torah in the same breath that he's saying that the law is done away with. So these are the things that we're trying to address and clear up. We're just holding Christianity accountable. There's been a bunch of life. The biggest lie that was told was Jesus Christ was a white man. Show me Jesus Christ a white man in the Bible. We can show hell skin leprosy. We can show yellow hair leprosy. So how can that be a, 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 a recessive gene? Someone with a recessive gene can be Jesus Christ. He can't even be allowed in the congregation. That's a big lie that the perpetuates white supremacy. One thing, one thing Gino does say though is that Jesus wasn't a white man. No, but he doesn't sure. say that he was a black man either. Right. When the Bible says that his, his he had woolly hair and uh, bronze skin as if it was burnt in a furnace. So clearly he was heavily melanated of a very dark hue, yeah, not yeah. Arab or Middle Eastern. Like that guy just said, Jesus was Arab. If, if Jesus was Arab, that means he came from Ishmael. <laughs> the Arabs come from Ishmael. Hey, hey, we're talking to him right now. You can wait your turn. Yeah. Okay, well, like I say, y'all got some points. It's just, y'all not with that, that camp, supposedly. And I, and I got real offended when, you know, when I seen the escapade happen. Don't be offended, because it was out of love. Yeah. Understand what that was, really it was out of love, love, love brother. You heard of tough love? Yeah. Tough yeah. love. We love you guys so much that we're willing to surround your church with 800 men. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, but I think y'all should at least come announce, you know, professionally, orderly. Oh, they knew. I you heard know? they emailed. I heard they emailed, emailed or talked to him and told him. Right, they were gonna be there. And let me tell you something. You're lying because uh, when you're lying, I'm gonna call you lying because when their brothers came out, they said that he was getting ready to teach and people were still going into the church. So he wasn't preaching when they were out there. And the brother that left shortly after they clearly didn't have a, what kind of opportunity to dialogue with General Jennings. He didn't want no smoke. So I just, again, you keep saying you're offended, but you're going under a, a, a false understanding. And that didn't, none of the stuff you're offended about happened in actuality. So technically, you're not, you sh there should be nothing you're going to be offended about. And the Bible says, call loud like a trumpet. So even if you were out there, there those people in that church, they're in sin. What are we supposed to do if we see sin? People in sin. Oh, no. Give me a second, 50 and 1. I'm going to show you what the Bible says. Yeah, go ahead. What's this? 50 and 1. So you can't get mad at uh, the, the Israelites for calling out sin, perpetual sinning at that, right? Read that out. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1. Uh -huh. Cry aloud. Cry aloud. Spare not. Spare not. We don't care about no business. <clears throat> we're, we're dealing with truth. Go ahead. Let up thy voice. Like a trumpet. You say you had a problem with them yelling. They weren't even yelling. They were using the microphone, microphone so people could hear the message. Go ahead. And show my people. Show my people. You're one of God's people. That's right. Their transgression. Their what? Their transgression. You know Genesis sees you that Jesus Christ is Esau. <laughs> Come on, brother. What are we talking about right now? Read that again. And show my people their transgression. Is that a transgression to call Jesus Christ Esau? Yes or no? What's it gonna take for what's it gonna take for God to open your eyes to see that you have been lied to like we were lied to? Christianity is a false religion and it's a white supremacist cult and that you need to repent, come out of that madness and learn you're a Hebrew Israelite, keep God's laws, statutes, and commandments. That's right. How many knocks does God have to do on the doors of your heart? I I, I know Christianity is a man made religion. I'm no Chris I don't believe in Christianity. Does Gino Jennings say they're a part of Christianity? No, he doesn't preach that. Okay, well, he doesn't preach. Okay. He doesn't believe in Christianity. He doesn't. He believes in the virgin birth. He believes the law is done away. He believes uh, Jesus is Esau. <laughs> Jesus is Esau. He believes uh, Christmas. Uh, huh? He celebrates Easter. I don't know if he no, celebrates. No, we, we don't, nah. don't celebrate none. I don't think. I don't think they. Easter. No, no, no. I don't think they. Yeah, I don't. I don't think they. They, they do that. No. But he teaches all people can be saved. He teaches there's a hell. That, none of that's biblical. That's all the tenets and dogmatic rhetoric of Christianity. 
So you don't believe in him? No. When we die, we go up to the spirit world. Give me Ecclesiastes 3 and 21. Hell is a condition, but there is the lake of fire which will be on earth. That hasn't happened yet. That's Revelation chapter 20 and, and 21. Yeah, the second death hasn't happened yet. Go ahead, Ecclesiastes 3 and 21. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 21. Who knoweth the spirit of man? Who knoweth the spirit of man that what? That goeth upward. That goes upward. And the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth. So the beast, they don't have that spirit. They just, they're alive with energy and life, but they don't have that spirit that gets judged like us. So we go up to the Father. Yeah. The, that's Bible. That's so Bible. So where's that in there? But that's, yeah, I mean, I, like I say, I just, like I say, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be very respectful because, you know, I believe in respect. I respect you, you know, you know, but I just, you feel like we're doing respect with you too? Yeah, yeah. But I just, I really talked out with uh, a part of that camp that did that, you know, fulfill. What were you going to do? You were coming out here to get out? Hey, man, you know, I, I ain't, ain't going to be talk, you know, I don't want to, you know, because he's important, you know. So. You know, you know, like I like I said, I go to war behind First Church because he's he's my apostle, you know? He's an iron man. They're starting to blitz the camps now. Right. We don't care. We pray. <laughs> we want you I to told come. God, don't give me a hundred grand. Give me a group of apologists who think they're finna blitz me. Right. And see what happens. They don't come. We don't. We don't. Pray so, so, real quick. Um, <laughs> I done lost my damn train of thought. Oh, uh, uh, does Geno Jennings know that you're smoking black and mild? I don't know if he. I, I mean, I haven't told him. He but teaches, I'm not. I'm not perfect. That, does he you know, teach that? That's nah, he okay. Teach it. Nah, we okay. shouldn't drink. We shouldn't smoke. There's a lot of things we shouldn't do. I'm gonna see. I, I feel sure too. We all have to feel sure the glory of God. What's it gonna take for you to not be a sinner anymore? I mean, you just gotta repent. Ask, uh, ask Christ to help you out. Whatever sin you're going through, you gotta pray. So do you willfully sin? When you know something's wrong? And you know it's a sin, do you still do it? I mean, there's a lot of things, I mean. It's a yes or no question. I mean, you can ask yourself the question, because you sin too. You can ask yourself that question. I don't sin. You know I, don't, sin? I don't willful sin. Oh, yeah, I mean. Do you, you know black and mild is a sin, according to your understanding? Yeah. And yeah. you still do it. So you yeah. willful sin. Well, I mean, if you want to see it that way. Give me Hebrews 10 and 26. If you want to see it that way, that's I'm about to you help see. you right now because you're my brother. Give me Hebrews 10 and 26. We're going to do something that the first church wouldn't do, and that's give you Bible, brother. Hebrews 10 and 26. Okay. Go ahead. It's Hebrews ch chapter 10, verse 26. For if we sin willfully. If we what? If, if we, we sin, sin willfully, willfully. If we know it's wrong and we still do it, then what? After that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. Uh -huh. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. So can we get you to throw that away, brother? Well, I mean, he, he's sinning right Before you guys hear his response, before you see if the Holy Spirit allows him or makes him rather throw away his black and mild, I need you guys to hit the like button. I need you guys to hit the like button. Matter of fact, let's take a 30 second break for y'all to hit the like button.
right. Now, let me rewind it just a little bit. Let me rewind it just a little bit. There we go. It's Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. For if we sin willfully. If we what? If, if we, we sin, sin willfully, willfully. If we know it's wrong and we still do it, then what? After that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. Uh -huh. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. So can we get you to throw that away, brother? Well, I mean, he, he's sinning right there. He, he's got tattoos. You're not supposed to have, you're not supposed to mark your body. Read, read it slow for him. Watch this. I'm you're glad you said that. You're not supposed to mark your body I'm or get you earrings. That. You're not supposed to wear earrings, get tattoos. Brother Aaron, I'm earrings. glad you said that. The answer is right got, here. He's what got we just tattoos read. and he's got pure. Read got it one more time. You're not supposed to have but that. Why? Read it one more time. Wait, hold on. Go ahead. For if we sin willfully, watch this. After what? After we have received the the received of the truth. So, if you sin willfully after you receive the truth, he didn't know that it was a sin to get these. But after he received the truth, he does not sin willfully anymore. Huh. So this answers your question, my dear beloved. Now yep. give me this. Give me that real quick. First, <laughs> first. So, somebody in the chat asked, how do I feel about vocab alone? Well, I got his mug shot from an alleged, an alleged pedophilia case. Bing! See, we know Mark Reiser. You understand? <laughs> we, listen, I'm just saying. I don't know if, if he was charged or persecuted, prosecuted rather. But all I know is this looks like an, an, an alleged pedophilia case. Let's go. What about having, what about having, uh, I got about up, wearing necklaces? You know what that's You're not supposed to be wearing necklaces. Where is that in the Bible that it says you can't so wear a necklace or, or an uh, earring? You're not supposed to have earrings. Get that, get that in the Bible. The Go book ahead. of Sons of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 10, verse 11. Thy cheeks are calmly with rows of jewels. What's that Thy on? neck with chains of gold. Oh, thy neck with chains of gold. He has a grill in his mouth. Grills and gold. And he has a what gold chain. Is that? Of, uh, no, thy no. neck with chains of gold. Sorry. We will make thee borders of gold with studs of silver. Hey, what happened to chains, gold, earrings? <laughs> what happened to Daniel? Well, a man's not supposed to have long hair. He's got long hair. Uh, where is it saying? Wait, wait a second. Have you heard about a Nazarite vow? Right. That, yeah, I heard about the Nazarite, but that was only for a particular time. Where'd the Bible say that at? It's got it in there. Where? We need to see it. You know, that you, uh, first of all, if a man's not he's supposed to be mistaken as a woman, you're not supposed to have long hair. So why did, King, why did Samson have long hair? He had long hair. It was a, it was a veil for a short time. You know, he, so he, he grew were, his hair real long. What is the sin according to the Bible? What's the sin? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, you know what a sin is. I know what a sin yeah, is. First John, first John 3 and 4, since you're already there. Yeah, I'm going to show you. If you can't show me in the law of Moses that it's prohibited, then it's not a sin. Go ahead. Look at First John chapter 3, verse 4. What does yeah. it call it again? First John chapter 3, verse 4. Uh -huh. Whosoever committed sin. Whosoever sins, what? Transgresseth also the law. Transgresses the law. If you can't show me in the Torah where it's prohibited, then it's not a sin. Wow. Give me Romans 7 and 12. Now what Paul is saying is, is when you when you do it in a when you have long hair in an effeminate way. We have braids and cornrows. If you look up in the Hebrew, it's, it's, uh, when you look uh, you look at Samson's locks, right. it says plaits. Those are cornrows. Even the Zitzis. Romans 7 and 12. Right. Go ahead. It's Romans chapter 7 verse 12. For wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. Uh -huh. <clears throat> verse 13. Was then that which is good made death unto me? No. Uh, seven. So like, <laughs> seven and seven. This is good right here because this shows you what sin is. So when Christians say the law is done away with, they're actually saying you can't sin anymore. That's, that's asking us. Go ahead. This is Romans chapter 7, verse 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin. I would have never known what <coughs> sin was, but what? 
But by the law. But by the law. That's good. That's good. <laughs> so can we get you to throw that away? That's a cold cut. I'll put it in my pocket, you know? Can we get you to throw it in the trash, brother, so you can live another day? Well, like I say, my religion is holy. So it was here before the foundation of the world. How, do you, and that's how a, does one become holy? I mean, that's, that's what I believe. How you does know? one become holy? I mean, you got to consecrate, consecrate your body to the Lord, you know? Dude, the Bible says the law makes you righteous and holy. Give me Deuteronomy 6 and 25. But do you, do you believe them? in holiness? Yes. Do you believe that holiness was here before the foundation of the world? Give me Romans chapter 7, stay there. Look at God answering all your questions right here. I believe that. You won't get none of these answers from Gino. Give me this, verse 12. Now look, God is answering all your questions <laughs> within the same chapter. He said he believes in holiness. Romans 7 and 12. This is Romans chapter 7, verse 12. Wherefore the law is holy. The what? The law is holy. So how do you get holiness according to the Bible? Read it, read it slowly for him. Wherefore the law is holy. So I'm asking you again, how do you get holiness according to the Bible? I found the law. Bye -bye! Let's go! Yeah. But you just pray. said you believe in holiness. Yeah, I do believe in So what in brothers is doing, we're trying to help you keep the law so that you can do what you said you believe in. This is all an act of love. Even right. though you might be arguing, recognize that this is love. This is the Lord showing you love. Come on. Right. It really is. This is love, brother. How do you show you love God? I know, I know how I show you love God. How do you show you love the God? According to the Bible. I mean, I mean, I know how I, I show my love for God. I know how I do. See, and that's the problem. We got to remove sure. ourselves from what we feel like is the truth. And we got to go by the standard and the measuring book, right? Get that in 1 John 5 and 3. Go ahead. 1 John chapter 5, verse 3. Uh -huh. Yo, for this is the love of God. This is how you show your love for God. That we keep his commandments. By keeping his commandments. And his commandments are not grieving. And they're not grieving. Let's get John 14, 15. Look at John chapter 14, verse 15. Uh -huh. If you love me, if you love him, then what? Keep my command. So according to the Bible, how do you show your love for your heavenly father? You just read it. Keep the command. By keeping right. the commandments. Let's go. Oh, praises. You will never get this at, at church. I, 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 you get the Bible I today. I mean, I, I believe I believe in the Bible and I believe in the Apocalypse 2. That's right. you know, I believe in the Apocalypse 2. Uh, so for, those, for those who don't know, hold on, Slucky. For those who don't know, uh, Gino Jennings Church does believe in the Apocrypha. Yeah. And the Apocrypha has been in the Bible for over 2,000 years until that homosexual white man, Martin Luther, started the Protestant Church, the Reformation, and his students, his students and them after them, started questioning it and attacking it. All right. Well, like I say, if I have my my uh, the uh, if I have my Bible with me, I will get in more of a serious debate. Well, we got a bunch of Bibles for you, so you anything know. that you're thinking, we'll pull them all up for you. This is what we're here for. You, you have know? one more scripture. Yeah, I got Go one ahead. for you. This is for him because, like, you were showing him the law and letting him know we were basically showing him this is love. This is what all of our people are doing. Romans chapter ten, verse one. It says, "Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel." Is that they might be saved. Israel's talking about our people, whether you believe it or not. It says, For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, which you do. You have a zeal of God. You're not over here talking about, oh, there ain't no God. I don't care. You love God. You're talking about God. Our people do. The Bible says they have a zeal of God, but it's not according to knowledge. That's why you're saying things like, You have a zeal of God. But that zeal isn't according to the knowledge of God. You know, so that's why you're saying things like, well, this is what I believe. This is what I believe. If you're going off what God is saying and you understand, what God, you know, you can't just say this is what I believe. It don't matter what we all just believe. Yeah. We have to know what God is saying, right? Yeah. So yeah. it says, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness. Since our people, Geno Genesis, since they're ignorant, they, they don't know what God will cook. Like, you eat pork? I'm not, yeah, yeah, I, I know it's, it's forbidden to eat it. Right. But yeah, I do eat it as long as you bless it. Fine. I mean, See, but that's what this Bible is talking yeah. about right here when it says they're being ignorant of God's righteousness. God yeah. says it's a righteous thing for you not to eat pork. There's no, let me find the scripture that says, oh, if I pray over it. No, that's not what God is talking about. But that's what God means when he says that our people have a zeal of God, but their zeal isn't according to righteousness. 
And since they are ignorant of what God calls righteousness, and says, and going about to establish their own righteousness. So that's what our people do. Since we don't know what God is saying is right to do and what's wrong to do, we'll go out and say, well, this is what God means to me. All I got to do is be nice to people. I, I, hey, I told people, hey, Jesus lives. I spread the word. That's not what they're talking about. But that's what our people do because our pastors, our shepherds, have never went to show us what God is saying is righteous, right? So because of that, we go to establish our own righteousness. It says, and have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So our people, everybody at Crepe Dallas Church, they have a zeal of God, but it's not according to knowledge. And because they're ignorant of what God is calling righteous, they go to set about what they call as righteous, and they haven't been able to submit themselves to the will of God. That's what's happening to all our people. Stop. Stop. Yeah, well, that does happen. That's happening in that church, you know. Every church, the churches that we all came out of, it's happening. How'd you, how'd you, Salaki, how'd you find my email? I think I've seen you, uh, I think it was on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, and you was talking about First Church. What you, you was talking about First Church and how... The whole situation. You, yeah, or just, you know, yeah. Or talking about like the congregation used to wake up and, you know, you was just, you, you, you were saying some things I just really didn't agree. You know, I was very upset. Mm -hmm. You know? So I'm gonna title this video, Geno Jennings student goes to yeah. war with Hebrew Israelites. Right. And it, and it turns no, no, and it no, turns. no, no, you, you ain't got to put it like that because even though he's he's my pastor and general overseer, he wouldn't even want me to come here and really debate you like this yeah, right. because I'm, you know, I'm if I'm representing him, I can't be representing him. In but a, this, in turned a out, nah, this turned out very edifying. No, sometimes the titles are just to, to bring people in. Right. So so both sides will see we can have these peaceful discussions. And you and we may not fully agree after this discussion, okay. but it was it was had, it was had, and Lord willing, the seeds were planted, and the Most High does the rest. Okay. You're always welcome to hit the email. You're always welcome to come down here and chop it up with us. Bro. Always, you yeah. know. Well, okay. you know, if I chop it up, I want to be in the library where it's quiet, and I pull, and I pull the Bible, I start really, start you know, going in, yeah, start I, going I'll really in. start going in there. Right yeah. now, I'm just not doing it because it's, you know, it's. You know. Yeah, it's hectic. It's chaotic out here. Yeah. It's chaotic out here. But, but we yeah, gotta, I we, just, I, and I want to be respectful to everybody because we, we got a right to our own beliefs or whatever, you know. And that's, you know, but I was, I got emotional how you, how you was talking about First Church, you know. I, you know, and I mean, you, you have a right to say whatever you want to say and believe. But I just don't like people attacking the apostle like that, man, you know. Ready, ready to ride for the apostles, huh? Hey, man, you know, I've already chosen my side. Yeah. I've already chosen. I've died for this. Listen, you know what it sounds like to me? To be honest with you, after everything, it sounds to me like you're more ready to die for your apostle than you are to die for the words of the Lord. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like some man worship going on. Like, it doesn't matter what he says, what lie he tells you. That's not, that, that's not the big deal. You're not tripping off the words of God. You're more so tripping off of what he said. That's a problem. You know the Bible speaks against that, against idolatry, against well, man worship. He chose his side. He knows. Yeah, but that's what we got to get him off of that. That's the wrong side. The, but I, yeah. the, the, the side is supposed to be Hamashiach, the one who died for our sins. Right. <laughs> uh, Gino Jennings didn't do that. Yeah, I know. I mean, yeah, so I you know. Could, don't be like that, man. Change, change the way that you think. Remember what Jesus said? They asked him who's going to make it to the kingdom of heaven. He said, whoever humbles themselves like this young child. You have to humble yourself again. We all had to do it. We weren't raised in this. We had to say, okay, maybe we were taught some lies in the Bible. We had to we had to forget everything that we thought we knew as adults. As adults, we did this and had to come back and learn again. That's why we're able to go in this Bible and show you things that your pastor's not going to show you. Do not get so caught up with a man, man. Don't be caught up. My, my auntie called me. Oh, Gino Jennings is bad. I, this is God honest truth. This is literally a couple months ago. This is when I got introduced to Gino Jennings. Oh, he's bad. He's bad. He says women can't wear dresses or, or can't wear jeans. I'm like, man, I think we've been saying that for the last 15 years. But you you never called us bad for it, you know what I'm saying? But in her mind, he's bad, you know what I'm saying? Don't be like a woman who gets caught up in a man's and, and, and how well he talks and how he can pop it. And don't get caught up in all that. Because remember the story of Moses, right? Remember Moses didn't talk that well, remember? He didn't feel like he could talk to the people. Don't be a person that, that like, like if, if, if Moses came walking down the street today and tried to talk, most people wouldn't even listen to him because his speeches are coming out quick enough. One of the one of the tools that the Christian pastor uses is that he's able to talk really, really well and really, really smooth. And people, people, they gravitate to that. You know what I'm saying? Charismatic cult leader. Exactly.
Don't be no fool, man. God got you up here for a reason, man. You know, and He wants you to remember this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You think you were up here to debate us about about uh, about your pastor? No, you were up here so God could show you all these things back to back to back to back to back to back. That just happened. When you, I've watched hours of of your pastor's sermons. I'm not writing down too many Bible verses in two hours over there because he's not teaching us what God said. You know what I'm saying? So don't follow man. Man will get you fucked up yeah, every no, time. He's a soldier. You yeah. are a soldier, yeah. but you need to be a soldier for the most high. That's right. Give me that. Book uh, of Psalms, chapter 94, verse 16. We uh, know. Who will rise up for me? Who will rise up for Gino? For me against the evildoers. Not right. for Gino, for right. the most high. Right. You gotta rise up for him against the evildoers. Right? Go ahead. Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? That's who you gotta be a soldier for, for the most high. Get that, Gashion? Which you said you had something? Yeah, yeah. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 4, verse 27. Yeah. Make not thyself an underling to a foolish man. Make not yourself an underling to a foolish man. Now you may not say, you may not believe or know that Gino is foolish, but for the simple fact that we just proved certain things out of the Bible that he he's not teaching or that he's he's twisting, that makes him one a fool. Read. Neither accept the person of the mighty. Neither accept the person of the mighty. Meaning just because he's got a thousand member congregation, 50 years of preaching, power and money reputation and fame that's not why you accept them you try the spirit by the spirit is what they're saying in the bible that's let's hear the conclusion of the matter let's go here we go Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13 uh -huh. let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter here's the conclusion of the whole matter the christian church is saying god's duty for man has changed me and god's some fickle double-minded person read fear god fear him hold on Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Fear God. And keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. This is the whole duty of man. Is to fear him, keep the commandments. God. You ain't got to follow us. You ain't got to follow no man. You read what's written in the holy word. And that is to keep his commandments. And one of his commandments, don't ever get it twisted. Is to believe on his son. That's part of the commandments. Yeah, All right, you gotta, have a, you gotta have a pastor though. How how can they hear if they don't got a preacher? That is true. You know? that is, no, no, you're right about that. So what you do, what you do is is whatever your preacher or pastor is saying. Let's say you don't. Let's say you don't have. One. There are some Israelites who read Deuteronomy 28 and said, "Oh, we're the Israelites." Then they found. A preacher or a pastor, but their words have to echo what's in the Bible. You understand? Go ahead. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse 1. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of our pasture, said the Lord. See that? So certain a lot of these pastors in these Christian church are destroying our people. They're not gathering our people. They're trying to be all inclusive. Why is there white people? I seen a white elder at Geno Jennings Church. Geno trying to bring all nations together. Can you tell me what happened when Nimrod tried to bring all nations together? I don't know that particular. The Tower of Babel? Well, yeah, when they tried to bring the all language. nations together, what did God do? Well, he scattered, uh, he changed the language. Right. So God's not with this all-inclusive egalitarian universalism. He wants nations to be separate. That's Deuteronomy 32 and 8. Yeah, Deuteronomy 32 and 8. He's a separatist God. He's a separatist. Deuteronomy 32 and 8. So if God is a separatist, but Gino wants to bring all nations together, who should we go with? With Gino saying or the Heavenly Father? So read. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 8. Uh -huh. The Most High divided the nations. He did what? The Most, the Most High, High divided, divided the, the nations. nations. He divided them. Go ahead. Their inheritance. When he separated his sons of Adam. When he what? When he separated, separated the sons, sons of Adam. Adam. He separated them. Why didn't he say, I made the world and the earth for everybody to come together? He made the world and the earth to separate the nations. 
That doesn't mean because we're separated, let's go bomb you. Because we're separated, let's go enslave you. It just means everybody is separate doing their own thing. And he's always been like that. Exclusive, but Christianity teaches all inclusive. That ain't it, Brother Aaron. Most High is calling you unto holiness, brother. He's calling you to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. He's causing you. He's calling you to wake up to the truth that you're a Hebrew Israelite. That's right. Well, I mean, like I, I already told you, my faith, what my belief is, you know, and you know, like I say, I already told you, like what I am. It ain't wavering, huh? Yeah. It ain't wavering. It ain't coming off. I mean, you know, I follow. I believe everything that's in that Bible. When okay. the the apostle, like I say, he ain't. I ain't talking a lot. When I put this video up, just rewatch it, man, and take notes and meditate and pray. You know? Okay. Uh, right. last, you want to say some last? Yeah, because I want you to understand the stuff that you're saying. We, we, we've been taught a lot of scriptures in, in Christianity, but we're not, they don't break down to us what it means. And you just said, how will the people know unless there is a preacher, right? Mm -hmm. So, so us, black people, right? Why are we in America? How did this happen to us? Why did God allow this? A lot, well, there's a lot of things that happen. According to the Bible, why? Where, where does it say in the Bible? Yeah. You talking about the blacks coming over here? Yeah, yeah why, why are we not in our own land? Why do we have the last names of white people? Why do the police, why are well, they able to shoot us down? Well, and nobody they're doing the slave trade. That's why we don't got our original So land. why was there a slave trade, according to the Bible? This is going back to you saying, the people, how would the people know unless there's been a teacher sent? Right. You guys don't know because the person that you think oh. was sent, hasn't showed you anything. God has not sent that man. Yeah, can, can Tino yeah. Tinnings go into the Bible and show you why this happened to us? And why God was okay with it? Uh, or will he say, we were in Africa living in damn the jungle and the white man came and saved us and civilized us? I, I can't, I don't know what he is. I can't speak, of, I can't speak and say what he would say, you know? But, but, but you've been learning for over five years. He never, he never brought out one of the most important things in history that happened. Yeah, we all, yeah, we know about that. But you know, there was already black people over here yeah, before the, the slave trade. The Northern Kingdom of Israel. <laughs> you know, there was already black people here. Yes, the Northern Kingdom. I'm talking about this though. Not the people that was here, this. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that happened. Yeah, we all know it happened. You know, we know about the slave church. Why was God, why did God allow that to happen? I mean, you have to ask yourself that question. No. I know why. I can show you in the Bible. Give me Deuteronomy 28 and 68. And, 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 and listen, we're telling you this so that you can change the way that you're seeing things. You just said it. That means God's word is in you. How can the people know without yeah, a preacher? One, the questions we're two. asking you, if, if, if the guy who you're believing is your teacher, if God sent him, he, you would have the answers to that. You would listen to him for five years. It wouldn't be, I don't know. That's because the guy that was sent wasn't sent by God. That's why. See, I, I, when I first learned this truth, eight hours in the truth, I could debate Geno Jennings right. and win. <laughs> Just eight hours in the truth. You ain't got more scriptures here today than you heard in five years, bro. Give me Deuteronomy 28, verse 1, hey, and bro. verse 15. That's what you think. You know, I know more than you think I know. I mean, listen, you know until you prove me wrong, until you until you email me and we link up and we go to a library, go ahead. The book of Deuteronomy. Let's show why this happened. Chapter 28, verse 1. Yeah. It shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments. So if we listen to God and do all the commandments, he's talking to the Israelites. So we're going to see who the Israelites are today. Geno Jennings thinks it's them white Jews in Israel. That's the fault. That's read. To observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So if we do the commandments, he said he was going to bless us. Read verse 15. Verse what happens if we break the commandments? Go ahead. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass. If thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command in his name, that all these curses should come upon thee and overtake thee. See that? So if we break the commandments, all the curses will come on us. Let's see if this is one of the curses. Verse 68. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee to Egypt again with ships. We were going into an Egypt again with ships. 
How do we know this ain't ancient Egypt? Because God promised he would never send us back to ancient Egypt. So either God is a liar and promise breaker, or this is indicative of going into bondage again. We didn't need ships last time to go to Egypt. Go ahead. Which ships, by the way, were of, I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again, and there you shall be sold unto your enemies. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. When we got here, who were we sold to? Our friends. The white man, the white man, right? No, that's what, that's what, I mean, the slave trade. Yeah. The slave trade. So when we got here, we were sold to the white man. But it said we would be sold to our enemies. So who are our enemies? Depends on how you want to look at it. Well, we got here, we were sold <laughs> to the white people, right? Well, that's what you're saying. That's what you're saying. No, according to history, yeah. we were sold to white people. Yeah. He yeah. said we would be sold to our enemies. Come on, brother. I know it's in you. I know you from the Midwest. You see how the hell they treated us. So if we got, if we were sold to our enemies, and we were sold to the white man, then who was our enemy? <laughs> Why is he trying to say it? Why? Come on, you know, I'm just, I'm just, you. No, it's great. I'm just, it was great debating with y'all brothers. All right? <laughs> all right, you we know. love you, man. We love you, brother. Yeah, all right. All right, Have a nice day. Shalom, right. man. Shalom, shalom. All, right. all, right. all praises. Okay, uh, let me say something. <laughs> All praises, honor, and glory. All praises, honor, and glory. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link in the chat since we got some Christians in here. I'm going to put a link in the chat. Let's open it up for questions, comments, and smoke. Questions, comments, and smoke. Questions, comments, and smoke. And also, too, let's get the smoke session going. Also, too, I ought to give a special, special shout out right now. Special, special shout out right now to one of my brothers. We're going to get the smoke session going. But my brother, your brother, none other than from Sakari Riverside, I need y'all to go support the man. I need y'all to go support this brother. Let me put his link, the link to his YouTube in the chat. I know y'all ain't going to go there right now. But here's what I'll do. Gaza, our brother Gaza. Make sure y'all tap in with him. He's a uh, Sakari Riverside. He got songs featuring Chief Priest. He got songs with me. You understand? He's a, he got a song with Monologue. Run his child. Run, run his album up. Let him and let him know what you think about his music too. This is a uh, the love song right here. This is the song My Alliance with uh, Gorilla Hebrew. Also with the brother uh, Quadash. Let's play some of this real quick till we get some smoke on here. You understand? This is one of the hardest joints. <laughs> run it up, run it up, Sakari. I should be a DJ. See, we got an alliance over here. You understand? Shout out to the shout out to the bruise in the back. Uh. See, you guys see that? Look at that, look at that. How you get all these brothers in one room and not one fighter argument break out? That's because we the Hebrew Israelites coming to gather our people, man in a harmonious fashion, brotherhood, and an alliance, just like the song says. He already ran up 11,000 on y'all. Let me hit the like button while I'm here. Ding. So yeah, y'all, check out his channel. Please support him like y'all support me. Leave a comment too. Let him know if it's ass, gas, or trash. He needs all the feedback. Again, the brother Gaza, G-A-Z-A-H, my main man. I had to give him that plug. All praises to the Heavenly Father. So we got somebody in the back named Trinity the Trinity. All right. Somebody's here to talk about the Trinity. Mike check, Mike check. Yup. Yup. Okay. Goofy. <laughs> Somebody's real goofy. If you got a question, you can ask it in the chat. If you don't want to join the show, you can ask it in the chat. No more goofies though. Uh, somebody says, 
Oh, he got clothing too. I forgot. The brother got a clothing line. If you want to get your brew drip, go to Gazaz YouTube, leave a comment. He got brew drip sauce. Got a um clothing line 1016, I believe. Harmless as a dove, wise as a serpent. Y'all know what time it is, brother. All praises, honor, and glory. So what we got? Who we got? Right, brother Quadar. Some people just have no life. No life. What y'all think about Volcan Malone? This is him right here, the black, the savior of the black church. This is the savior of the black church. Why do we call him the savior of the black church? Because the black church is calling him going crazy, saying, hey, there's so-called black Hebrew Israelites in our community. Hey, white man, uh, teach us how to fix it. How do we fight against it? Imagine a white man asking the black church how to help the white community. That's just ridiculous. This is why we as a people got Stockholm syndrome. We need the white man to fix everything. All right, mic check, mic check. You're live. Can you? I hear you. Uh, cool. Deacon, what's it? What's going is it on? true that the is it true that the um one third Israelites um will be regenerated in the kingdom? Two that was that what you want? Two thirds. Two thirds, my bad. Yes, that's what we believe. Yes. Okay, then in scripture for it. Um. Well, all Israel will be saved. And then also Ezekiel 36, us multiplying in the kingdom, we will be regenerating babies through procreation. And some of us will come, well, all of us will come back. So in the end, all of Israel will be saved despite our sins and that. Well, it, it says the seed of Jacob will be saved. So if you are the seed of Jacob, you will be saved. You will have to suffer a miserable death and be the least in the kingdom. So uh, I did a video on it. It's called All Israel Saved. Just type in Sakari All Israel Saved. No, okay. All right, then. That's just what I went to ask. No problem. Shalom, King. Uh, thank you. Shalom, King. I bet. Um, so I guess since we don't have any link clickers, I'll, ask, I'll answer a couple of questions in a chat. Somebody says, if Jesus is not God, Jesus caused Thomas to sin because Jesus didn't correct Thomas because Thomas called him God. Jesus called the Israelite man God. The angels are called God. Satan is called God. Satan is called God with a definite article in the Greek. When you look at 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, he's called the God. So just because you are called God or Elohim does not mean you are the most high God, Yahweh. Please, you got to learn. Uh, um, <laughs> learn theology. The study of God. Learn theology. The least in the kingdom is basically you're still above all nations, and you know you you got that everlasting rulership, but it's status and position. <sighs> okay, um, Ashar Yahweh. Shalom, King. So Shalom. the argument. So the argument in Revelation chapter twenty-one, verse twelve. What's that? Uh, uh, it's talking about uh, the kingdom coming down, right? It's yeah. talking about the, the twelve gates. Yeah. Okay. So the argument is, it's a physical, it's a physical gate. It's physical twelve gates, three on each side. Con Allah. Now, well, that's talking about the people. That's not talking about a literal city because it's sixteen hundred miles high. That's just utterly ridiculous. Con, con. So. I called an elder. An elder was like, it's physical. And I'm over here like it's spiritual. But mm -hmm. it, you know what I'm saying? But so you just you just gave me a confirmation that there's a person that's watching right now and they may not have heard you. So I'm asking you again, is Revelation 21, verse 12, talking about the physical gate or just the physical Israelites? Let me let me show you real quick. Okay. So you there will be when you look in Ezekiel the 40th chapters, that's where it talks about the actual city in third temple where we have our gates. But Revelation is not talking. Will there be will we have our gates? Yes, uh, indeed. But Revelation 21, this holy city is not that. So let's go here. So he sees the holy city, and then let's just take a look at the measurements here. The measurements uh -huh. is 
I think it's 14, 144 cubits, right? Okay, so let's see how long a cubit is. Real quick, a cubit <laughs> is... This is the same thing I was saying. You going over the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> 25.5 uh right so a certain forearm mm. 144 oh. so some say stadia and when you look at the measurements though when you look at the measurements it's literally like 1600 miles high now where the darkness meets the light in the firmament it's only like 50 miles up so that means if this is literal and it's 1,600 miles in the sky, <laughs> it's just talking about the 144,000, honestly, because it's 12 times 12 times 12, 12, which is when you do the area of the cube, when you do to get the, what's inside the cube, you do 12,000 times 12,000. If you know just a little bit of algebra, that's 144,000. There it is. It's 12,000 furlongs. My bad. Salakia. 12,000 furlongs, and that is, let's look at a furlong, 12,000 of these. So it's 12,000 of these, that's 600 feet, 600 feet, 185 probably meters. So 600 feet, when you add 100, that times 12,000, literally over a thousand miles, that means our gates, our, our buildings, our walls will be higher than Seattle to San Diego. It's utter ridiculous. So it's all spiritual uh, spiritual numerology, brother. Con, and I totally agree with you. <clears throat> they try to reference Ezekiel with the Revelation 21. And then, like I said, I had to call it Elder, and he was like, it's both. It's both. But then at the same time, like, when you talk about Revelations 21 and 12, that is not physical. That is a spiritual Israel that is coming down from the, uh, from, you know, send the soccer. Ball. It can't be both. I'm going to tell you why it can't be both. I'm going to tell you why Ezekiel, the 40th chapters, have nothing to do mm -hmm. with Revelation 21. Watch this. Look at these gates, right? This is about to be the dagger. Watch the dagger. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. That's six gates. On the south, three gates. That's nine gates. And on the west, three gates. That's 12 gates. Now, watch this. And the walls of the city had 12 foundation, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. So really the apostles are holding these gates down. But there's no gate for Dan here in Revelation. Oh, that, that's, that's their favorite. They, that's their favorite because they'd be like, uh, Sakari and all these other uh, camps don't have Dan in their 12 truck. And that's where a trial chart. And she be trying to chop me, but at the same time, like Dan, you got to know the history of Dan. Can you break that down? Yeah, so Dan, the 12 tribes in Revelation 7 is only dealing with 144,000, not all of Israel. So because Dan has been reduced due to their sin, when you read Amos, the end of the eighth chapter, there's not even 12,000 of them to be a part of the 144,000, but they will be in the kingdom with a gate. Look at this in Ezekiel 48 and 1. And uh, I'm just going to read the latter part of for time's sake. For these are his sides, east and west, a portion for Dan. Mm, Dan is a part of the 12 tribe chart. It may not be on it, but it's still a part of it because it's going to be like that in the kingdom. Con. Con. All right, brother. All praises. <laughs> Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. All right, y'all. Again, Sakari Varsity Classroom Two, the first classroom one, has filled up already. Specializing in Hebrew apologetics, learn how to cut these devils, learn how to prove all things, defend the gospel, and have an answer for all things. Limited registration, serious inquiries only. Um, so, Sakari Seattle at gmail.com is how you inquire about those. I'm going to end this by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, and we do so by Hashem HaMashiach Yahweh Shai. Until next time, peace and love, y'all. Shalom. Somebody said, somebody said, we got a heathen in the chat. Who's the heathen in the chat? Who is the heathen in the chat? Seeking truth? Who is seeking truth? 
Next time we condemn other nations, we need to look at ourselves, our king. We sinned against the most high. So I was going to close out. Now I'm going to put a link in the chat so I can get on his helmet real quick. Let's see if he clicks. Let's, let's extend it overtime. We're going overtime now. Somebody called you a heathen? Well, let's put a link in the chat for whoever requested the link, I guess. I don't know. Somebody's trying to set y'all up. Somebody's trying to set y'all up for failure. Samoans are Japhetic heathens. Mr. Brother Corey Diaz. Samoans are Japhetic heathens. I just can't resist the smoke. I'm going to stand up now. I'm going to stand up for this one. Just for you? For KJ or you? Do you want to? Why? All right. All right, I'm going to give this 30 more seconds for somebody to come on here. Brother Lonnie, what's going on? What's going on, Deacon Shalom, Shalom. Uh, Come on, Lord. I just, uh, I just had a question about Isaiah forty nine and eighteen, mm -hmm. and uh, when I was reading it, it kind of made me think about the marriage supper of the Lamb. So uh, I'm gonna just read it real quick. Isaiah, That's what now? Forty nine and eighteen. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. It says, "Lift up thine eyes round about, and behold, all these gather themselves together and come to thee." As I live, saith the Lord, thou shalt surely clothe thee with them as with an ornament and bind them on thee as a bride doeth. Now, my question is, is this in reference to Isaiah chapter 60 and uh, Zechariah, what's that, 12 and 8, where we go to war when we get surrounded? And this well, is this is talking about us getting our kids back that we lost throughout the annals of time. So it says, um, lift up thine eyes round about and behold, all these gathered together. Who are the these? When you read the previous verse and after, matter of fact, let me just pull up the chapter real quick. And this is a powerful ver uh, chapter that I would like a Christian to try to explain as well, because it's talking about him reestablishing us. Let me share my screen real quick. But before I before I uh, give my understanding, what did, what did you think it was talking about? So when I look at thou shalt surely clothe thee with them. Basically, let me just go up one verse, right? Go ahead. Um, thy children shall make haste, thy destroyers, and they that made thee waste shall go forth of thee. Now, I was looking at Isaiah chapter 60. Let me grab that real quick. Uh, I'll start at verse 1. Arise and shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about. See, this was what made me thought uh, think that this was going back into that. It's that same language. Lift up thine eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy son shall come from far. So that go into what you were saying earlier about them bringing our children. Um, and thy daughter yeah, shall be nursed at thy side. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I can receive that. I think you're correct. Come, come. Oh, praises. Yeah, that's 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 a good precept. God. Oh, All praises. All oh, praises, King Shalom. Shalom. All right, brother. All right, you're the last person. You're the last, brother. He's happy to be on here. Nigga, happy to be on here. <laughs> oh, 
What's going on, young man? Talk to me. Shalom, Shalom, like you. Shalom, King. Okay. <clears throat> hey, I got some smoke for you. Go ahead, bring it out. You the last one. All right. Uh, you know how uh, you're out of here. IUIC like, like has been blitzing American <laughs> churches. You didn't even see what I just did, huh? Don't worry about it. Go uh, ahead. Oh, my bad. <laughs> 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 so, uh, you know how uh, they've been going across country blitzing all the uh, Christian churches, right? Yeah. I, I want to see the elders and the founders, like you, Chief Cap. Uh, I believe the chat and all of Israel will pay for y'all to go debate the uh, the small hats, the Wailing Wall. Put them up against it. Put them up against our Bible, and see what happens. No, Let them a, know who the true Jews is. That's a good. That's a good one. I'm Thank telling you, Israel will pay for it. We'll send y'all over there. Five well, or mean, five to eight know, man team. You know, you know, we could we could actually uh do it virtually, but we've debated rabbis before who are educated, very educated. All you gotta do huh. is look up Kari versus Rabbi. We debated like probably five uh five scholastic educated uh rabbis. So okay. I don't I'm not I'm not about to fly over. I'm not flying to my. I don't want to go in a house that was stolen from me. You know what God, I mean? God, God, I'll, God. Do it, I'll do it remotely and virtually. Okay. But you should look All that right. up. Sorry, versus Rabbi. There's a lot of a lot of uh, discussions we've done with them. God, God. Praise you. I'll praise, brother. I'll praise. All right, y'all. This time I'm out, y'all. Till next time. Till Friday. Friday night flux. See y'all then. Shalom.